One of the goals here at Digital Hammurabi is to wed the study of ancient texts and culture with the digital age. Extensive work has been done in the field of Assyriology to make these millennia-old compositions available to everyone in an understandable and user-friendly format. When it comes to reading Sumerian literary compositions, one of the most comprehensive and easy-to-use resources is the Electronic Text Corpus of Sumerian Literature, or ETCSL. In this video, I would like to show you how you can use this database to not only read and search through Sumerian literary texts in translation, but also, if you choose to learn Sumerian, to work with the original tablets and their translations, uh, sorry, transliterations. For most people watching this, your interest in ETCSL will lie in having a single place to read and search through Sumerian literature in English. So let's begin by taking a look at the overall corpus and how you can maneuver through ETCSL to find Sumerian text that you're interested in. So if you look here at the main screen, there are two primary places that you're going to uh, utilize. One is this button, Corpus Content by Category and the other is these two search functions. There are other things and we can talk about them perhaps in more detail if you'd like, but for now let's focus on these two things. So if you're reading in English, probably the first place that you're gonna go is here, Corpus Content by Category. So if you click on that, you'll see here the different um, categories of Sumerian literary texts, the way that they've been um, set aside here or categorized here. So ancient catalogs, um, narrative and mythological compositions. I think most people will probably be working in this section right here. Um, compositions with a historical background. So the Sumerian king list would be in here. Royal praise poetry. So if you want to look at praises to um, different rulers, you can see down here First Dynasty of Babylon. These are um, Sumerian royal praises to Hammurabi. Literary letters and letter prayers. Hymns and cult songs. So these are hymns to various deities. And then this sort of miscellaneous category. So literature about scribal life, debate poems, and so forth. Wisdom literature down here. Um, so that's sort of how it generally breaks down. Now let me show you um, maybe a, a little, uh, an, an easy way to get in to a particular text. So let's say you want to read one of the ancient stories, the Sumerian stories about Gilgamesh. So here it is. Narratives featuring heroes, Gilgamesh. So click into the Unicode and you'll see here the different Gilgamesh stories. So Gilgamesh and Aga, Gilgamesh and the Bull of Heaven, the death of Gilgamesh, and so on. Now, there are two um, links here. One is to the transliteration of the text, and one is to the translation. Right now, we're just going to look at the translation. So let's say we, read, we want to read about the story of Gilgamesh and Aga. You click on that, and there it is. Pretty straightforward. So you can read down through the text. You'll notice here things like one manuscript adds, and then it'll have this addition here. That means that one of the manuscripts that duplicates this text has uh, this additional line. If they have a question mark here, of course, that means they're not entirely sure that prancing is the right word here, but it's the best that they've got right now. And that's, that's pretty much it. So that's how you read it in the English. So if you wanted to read the Sumerian king list, compositions with a historical background, king lists and other compositions, and there it is, the Sumerian king list. So if you look at the translation, you're going to have an awful lot of um, manuscripts so and such and such have instead this. See all this? Because the manuscripts have a fair amount of variation. So proper nouns are listed in green, written in green. So of course the Sumerian king list has tons and tons and tons of proper nouns. But this is how you 
read it in English. Now, the other function, if you're just working with the English text, is searching. So let's say you want to search. You want to look up all the uses or all the appearances of the word um, temple. You can either type it right here and hit go. And it'll show you the text that has it, the composition that has it. And then it highlights in um, bold where it is in the line. And if you click on it, it'll bring up the transliteration. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, but now you can go down through and see all the places. Notice there are a lot. Where in the Sumerian literary texts that are in this corpus, which is a lot of them, um, temple has been tagged. Now there's another way you can do it. You can click simple search and do it up here. And it'll bring up the same results. Now that doesn't seem like much of a difference. You can do, um, you want to use this box for different things. I show it to you now in case we want to go into more detail in a, a later video. But that's how you essentially use ETCSL if you're going to read the literature in English. And of course, I suspect most people that's what you want to do. But for those of you who are interested in taking the Sumerian language course that I'm putting together now, ETCSL will be a very useful tool for you in your translations and in your research. So I want to walk you through that very quickly. So how do you use it if you're actually working with the Sumerian language? Well, you're going to go right back to that corpus content by category. And let's say we want to work in that same text that we were looking at, Gilgamesh and Aga. We go back to Gilgamesh, and instead of clicking on translation, we click on transliteration. And if you don't know what transliteration means, it's bringing the um, Sumerian text over into English characters so that you can read them in English. Um, see Megan's um, video on how to translate a text, how translation works, and she'll explain that a little bit more. You can see it in action. But if you click on that, you will see how the cuneiform is actually rendered. So, Lutu, King Tu, Gi Four, A, A Ga, Dumu, Enme, Bara, Gefor, C, Kefor. Line one of Gilgamesh and Aga. That's what the cuneiform says. These syllables, right? So, you can go down through and see exactly how the Sumerian. And again, if you watch Megan's video, you'll see exactly what what this means. So, I encourage you to do that. But you'll see exactly with the cuneiform, how the cuneiform is being represented here. Now, if you notice, if you put your mouse on any one of these words, you'll see the uh, lexical form pop up. So here, A2, it's a noun that means house or household. Gutu is a noun that means neck. So these aren't you want to be careful using these, you know, they're not, um, gutu here, for example, doesn't necessarily just mean neck, it's part of a verbal chain, but um, it's useful information when you're translating, but uh, see my video and I'll, my video series on learning Sumerian and I'll teach you how all that stuff works. So that's useful to see the, you know, the difference. So here, this is a verbal form, everything from ba to am3, this is all one verbal form, but it tells you that the verb is this, ak, means to do. So it's useful. Uh, if you are, are translating through this, let's say you're translating through this first line and you just can't get it, you want a little hint, what does the English say, or how do these translators translate it, click on the number, and it brings you over to the English. Envoys of Aga, the son of Enmar Vargesi, 
came to Kish to Gilgamesh in Onug, Horuk. Then you can go back by clicking on it and it takes you right back to where you were. So it's very useful. Oh, I don't know what number 11, what line 11 is. What is this tool to? How does that work? Click on it. And again, it's bringing you generally there. This is, we're looking for number uh, line 11. This is 9 through 14. So you might have to look through the paragraph a little bit to figure out where you are. But it takes you there. Now, another very helpful thing uh, that the people that have put ETCSL together have done is down at the bottom of the transliteration page, they have an awful lot of um, resources, secondary literature, and then the actual cuneiform sources for the text that, or the composition that you're dealing with. So let's start with the secondary literature. Jeremy Black, 1995, he has a commentary, a translation, and he discusses these lines, 70 to 80 and 92 to 99. If you click on that, there it is. Black, 1995, real and unreal conditional sentences in Sumerian in ASJ 17, pages 15 to 39. You can go look that up. I mean, not right now. That doesn't seem like it would be terribly exciting. Unless some people are really looking into conditional sentences right now. That was supposed to be funny. I don't know if it was. Anyway, um, so you can see here a lot of people have written on this text. Of course, it's a Gilgamesh text, so you'd expect a lot of commentary on it. Down here, if you wanted to actually go and find the original cuneiform sources, this is where you can go, and you can go down here and see which tablets actually have the, uh, the composition on them. And what this is telling you, and again, any questions that you have about this stuff, please feel free to contact me about it, and we'll go over a lot of this stuff in the course. But CBS 4564 is published in PBS 10.2. It's number five, and there's a photo of it in this second piece of secondary literature, AOAT 209. Um, same thing here, CBS 64, or 6140 has um, those, a section of the text and so forth. So if you wanted to, you know, make an addition of this, or if you wanted to go through in great detail and see the original sources, um, the original, the uh, individual lines, this is what you would do. Because what you're looking at here is what's called a composite text. And what that means is, for every line, they're looking at every source that has that line and making a composite, meaning, um, well, we don't have to talk about how they do it, but so if you want to look at, are there any variations, for example, here in line 106, you know, does every line have the word mushen for bird? Um, you would want to go down and look at all the different tablets and see which ones have line 106. And then you could see, you could look at all the individual sources and see if they all have that word or if just most of them do. Anyway, that's a little too much detail for right now. Sorry. Okay. So one more thing that I want to show you is how to search. So let's say... I'm assuming if I just keep clicking back, I'll get there, so, okay. Um, if you wanna search, for example, that same word, temple, if we wanted to search for every instance of the noun temple, or etu, a2, you could click on not the simple search, but the advanced search. And if you do that, and again, we can go into more detail later, you can type in, at two, and there they are. So these are all the different places where at two stands by itself. So let's see, let's say we saw this line and we thought, oh man, that's really interesting. E3 do eight before at two. For some reason, that's really interesting to us. What we can do is go over here and it'll tell you with a little pop-up, Nanasuen's journey to Nib uh, Nippur, to Nibru. 
and if you click on this you'll see it brings up the line and there it is a2 and it gives you a translation so it's extraordinarily useful um, and again I know this has been a very quick run through it's just the daily data so it's supposed to be fast but hopefully this um, will stimulate some interest in this and if you if you uh, you know have questions about how this works please feel free to contact me so in conclusion ETCSL is an amazing resource for anyone interested in Sumerian literature or ancient Near Eastern mythology, the backgrounds of the Bible, or the ancient Mesopotamian culture in general. So for more information about how to use ETCSL, ETCSL to read and to study Sumerian literature, please contact us here at Digital Hammurabi. Thank you.